Hi everyone. In the previous part, we had gone with the introduction to the microorganisms in soil and their importance where we discussed about the soil components and the factors affecting the soil and a brief note of a, a soil structure. In this part, we are basically going to discuss about the soil microorganisms in detail. And in the next part, we will discuss about the significance of uh, microorganisms in the soil or the importance of soil microorganisms in the next part. So let's begin with the soil microorganisms. So here, soil is a reservoir of uh, a variety of microorganisms like bacteria, actinomyces, fungi, algae and protozoa. And the soil is going to support their growth and development. But the distribution and diversity of soil microorganisms is going to depend on several factors that we discussed in the previous part like uh, temperature, pH, all these things. Simply the physio and chemical characters, plant cover, etc. Now this physical uh, or psycho uh, chemical characters of the soil that influences the microbial diversity and distribution or uh, going to be of geographical location, topography, climate, soil structure, depth, pH, temperature, availability of inorganic nutrient, soil water, soil atmosphere. So these are all the factors that are influencing the existence of the type of microorganisms in the soil. Now, the vegetation supported by the soil also influences the occurrence of microorganisms. The organic matter provided by vegetation and the root exudates are going to exert a significant effect on diversity as well as the density of the microorganisms in that specific soil in that location. A typical soil supports all major groups of uh, microorganisms such as bacteria, actinomyces, fungi, algae and protozoa along with the uh, bacteriophages and micro or mycovirus which are going to be called as fungal virus. But I told you that their relative numbers are going to vary significantly depending upon the physical and the chemical characteristics in that atmosphere. So let's begin with the first type of the soil microorganism that is going to be the bacteria. So here you can see the distribution, the microbial distribution in soil. So how they are going to be different. So you will see the bacteria and actinomyces are going to be 40% whereas the other microflora, fungi and the algae is going to be 40% and other fauna is 5%, earthworms will be 12 and mesofauna is going to be 3%. So macro, meso and micro. Then distribution, so here depending upon the depth of the soil, the distribution of the microorganisms are also going to vary. For example, if you see the 1 to 8 centimeters of the depth of the soil, the aerobic bacteria are more in number, anaerobic is going to be of very less and actinomyces are going to be 2000, fungi 119 and algae 25. So as you go deeper into the soil, the number of the microorganisms are also getting less. Okay, so this is what you have to remember. Then coming to the bacteria, the first microorganism that is soil microorganism, so let's say. So bacteria are going to be the most dominant group of microorganisms in soil and probably equal to one half of the microbial biomass in the soil. It is these bacteria are going to be present in all types of the soils. So it may be a black soil, it may be clay soil, sand, whatever it may be. It is going to be present in all types of the soils. The all the three major morphological forms are going to be cocci, then bacilli, and spiral going to be occur in the soils. According to Winograski soil microorganisms, in general. Bacteria in particular are classified into two categories. They are, that means that according to Winograski, the bacteria present in the soil are being classified into two broad categories. What are those? One is going to be autochthonous, another one is zymogenous. So the autochthonous is going to be also called as indigenous population. 
which is going to be always uniform and constant in soil like this is going to be a resident flora in the normal flora of the human so in the same manner so these octo or octothonous uh, population is going to be of always uniform and constant in soil since their nutrition is derived from native soil organic matter the best examples are going to be orthobacter and nocardia whereas the zymogenes are going to be also called as fermentative organisms and these are going to be low under normal conditions but when specific substrates are added to the soil the number of the zymogenes bacteria increases and vice versa that means if you are going to dump more organic matter and depending upon that organic matter they are going to increase for example cellulose decomposes nitrogen neutralizing bacteria and those splitting ammonium to nitrate so this is how the bacteria is going to be categorized into two things depending upon the organic matter availability in the soil that is one is indigenous population the permanent what which is present and another one is a zymogenous which is going to increase when organic matter is more and decreases when it is less then most common genera are going to be the pseudomonas then arthobacter clostridium acromobacter bacillus micrococcus then you are going to have the flavobacterium corynebacterium sarsina and mycobacterium then e coli is going to be seen more in the soils which is the polluted with the sewage so as we know the sewage is going to have a more number of the e coli if you find the e coli more in number in the particular type of the area soil then we can see that say that that soil was contaminated with the sewage then aerobacter is a normal inhabitant of certain soils then mixobacterial general like mixococcus chondrococcus arganium polyganium and cytophaga and sporocytophaga are going to be the examples of mixobacterial genera that are going to be present in the soil and these mixobacterial is going to feed on other gram negative bacteria through the process called as lysis then moving to the actinomycetes so these actinomycetes population predominates in aerobic topsoil especially rich in organic matter so we can find these actinomycetes in the aerobic conditions of uh, at the same time the soil which is rich in the organic matter and their percentage in the total microbial population increases with the depth of the soil and uh, there is going to be of some actinomyces or isolated from the c origin so we know the a origin b origin c origin in the soil profile that we have seen in the first video first part so you can go through it so in the c origin we are going to find these uh, actinomyces and we can isolate from that c origin the most favorable ph for uh, these actinomyces is between 6.5 to 8 and they are intolerant to acidity that means if the soil is going to be acidic acidic in condition obviously actinomyces cannot tolerate and they are going to die the water logged soil is going to be the, uh, what we call is a unfavorable for the growth of actinomyces so that means there should not be more water there should not be more acidic in nature the best examples of uh, these actinomyces members are streptomyces nocardia micromonospora actinomyces actinoplanes and streptosporangia and these actinomyces are going to play an important role in the decomposition of uh, organic matter then moving to the next one is a fungi like actinomyces fungi are found abundantly in aerobic soils by number they are next to bacteria the diversity and abundance of a fungi depend upon the nature and amount of organic matter of the soil so these fungi are going to be more dominant in the acidic soils due to the fact that they are going to be of uh, more uh, able to use the acidic that means glucose is going to be converted into the acids by these fungi only so obviously they can be grown in the acidic soils fungi is going to exhibit selective preference for various depths of the soil that means they will prefer in which uh, layers they are supposed to grow 
and agronomic practices like crop rotation like uh, fertilization or pesticide application influences the nature and the dominance of fungal species that means it is going to differ if you are going to have the fertilization so more or pesticides more application so depending upon the agronomic practices the fungal species are also going to differ not only the fungi any microorganism is going to differ now these fungal species produce substances similar to humic substances in soil and hence they may be important in the maintenance of a soil organic matter and some of the fungi form ecto and endomycorrhizal associations with plants and help in the mobilization of soil phosphorus so most common fungal general encountered in the soil are going to be fungi imperfecta phycomycetes ascomycetes and mycelial sterilia so fungi imperfecta is going to be the species aspergillus botrytis cephalosporium penicillium and fusarium whereas phycomycetes is going to be the abscida muca rhizopus and pythium then ascomycetes is going to be the catorium and mycelia sterilia is rhizoctonia so these are the few examples of the fungi that are going to be present in the soil then moving to the next organism is cyanobacteria so the cyanobacteria can resist long spells of drought conditions like uh, nostoc muscorium and nodularia harvenia appeared from soil that had been dried for 79 years okay so that's a very important then nostoc passerinium and anabina ocellarodius variety of terrestris were obtained from a soil dried for 59 years whereas the rest all microorganisms were dead but these cyanobacteria are having that much of the capacity that they are going to resist the long spells of drought condition even 79 59 years when favorable conditions arises these develop slowly in comparison to bacteria and cocci green algae but quickly become dominant that means when favorable condition arises bacteria green algae everything will grow fast but this uh, cyanobacteria will grow very slowly but obviously it is going to be the dominant of than the other organism that is bacteria algae fungi then examples of this cyanobacteria that are present in the soil are going to be of uh, anabina nostoc olosoria cylindrosperum then tolyptrix geo sorry gliotrica then volella then lingbia calotrix crococcus and gliocapsa etc so these are the few species that we can find in the soil then cyanobacteria is going to possess the power of fixing atmospheric nitrogen from the air and play an important part in the enrichment of the soil with nitrogen so this is what we have to remember about the cyanobacteria then moving to the algae so soil algae or uh, ubiquitous in nature uh, wherever uh, moisture and sunlight are available so you can see in the dry in the watery logged conditions in all the things where the water and as well as the moist sunlight have to be available so they are going to form a green scum on the surface of the soils uh, which are visible to our eye that means when we see it, it it can we can identify that the algae has grown because of having the moisture as well as the sunlight availability and their number is not as many as fungi bacteria or actinomycetes but still they are going to be seen in a large number example of these algae that are present in the soil are going to be green algae example chlorella chlamydomonas chlorotrich chlorococcum and oregonium then blue green algae that we can find is going to be a chlorococcus then apanocapsa lingbia australia then anabina nostoc cytonema etc so all these is going to uh, perform two important functions in the soil that is firstly it is going to fix the atmospheric nitrogen either symbiotically or asymbiotically secondly upon the death and degradation they contribute the organic matter to the soil that means when these algae is going to dead so obviously that is going to be uh, considered as a organic matter to the soil upon degradation then moving to the next organism that is protozoa so as we know the protozoa are abundant in the upper layer of the soil and their numbers are directly dependent on 
bacterial population why because they feed on bacteria so soil protozoa are going to be of unicellular and the main function of this protozoa in soil appears to be indirect that is through regulation bacterial population so if the population of the bacteria is more so if the protozoans are going to control them so it's a kind of biocontrol so nothing is known about the associate effects of uh, protozoa with other soil microorganism the important genera of protozoa that are present in the soil are going to be the mastigophora then sarcunida and ciliata so the mastigophora examples are going to be elentoin then spiromonas heteromida Buda, spong, uh, Spongomonas, and ter Teramitus. Then Sorcudina, then we know very well is the Amoeba, then Biomixa, Piglophyia, then Nuclearia, and Trinema. Coming to the Ciliata, so you are going to have Bellantiphorus, Colpidium, Colopoda, Encyclix, Uroleptus, and Vorticella. So this, these are all going to be the few different types of uh, protozoa that are going to be inhabited the soils. Then moving to the bacteriophages, so the bacteriophages and the microviruses are going to be of uh, uh, the one which are going to be present in the soil. So coming to the bacteriophages, the bacteria eating viruses are usually called as phases or bacteriophages. And these are the smallest inhabitants of the soil and they are known to attack the soils of bacteria that means uh, the soil containing the cells of bacteria and actinomyces that is actinophases cyanobacteria they are going to be called as cyanophases and it is a uh, it may be of uh, too early to assess the importance of uh, bacteriophages in the overall influence of the soil on agricultural productivity because the information on this aspect that means the presence of bacteriophages in the soil is not sufficient to make any generalization. So that's the reason why it's a, it is undergoing process of study so we can't assess the importance of bacteriophages in the soil. Then coming to the mycovirus that is a fungal virus. So the, although it was stated earlier uh, that fungi are distinguishable from bacteria and actinomyces in the sense they are uh, that they are free from virus attack several workers have come to recognize the existence of these uh, fungi attacking viruses that is mycoviruses the most extensively studied system is the mycovirus of penicillium chrysogenum so these microviruses have also been observed in sections of uh, fungal spores as they normally observed more in the old hyphae. So the relationship between the microvirus and the metabolism or genetics of their host that is fungi still awaits the detailed study. So about the bacteriophages and the microviruses in the uh, presence of soil and their importance to the soil have to be of uh, studied and we cannot make the generalization right now then moving to the uh, things of the significance of these microorganisms to the soil we will discuss in the next part thank you